What's going on, everyone? It's Bob with Cinefellas. Right now, I'm bringing to you an interview with Nyla and Nooksuck. She made the movie Slashback, sort of a callback to a ragtag bunch of kids in Alaska coming across an alien. We talk about her movie, the ideas, her culture, and I even might talk about the Goonies a little. So sit back, watch, see what you yeah. think. Hey, Nyla, how are you today? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, doing all right. Doing all right. I literally <laughs> just finished watching your movie maybe about an hour ago. I had to. I had, oh wow! I had a lot of work going on. I gotta say, a lot of fun. I love a, a, a tribe of kids who come in together. You know, stuff. You know, to take on something. I think they recently did it with like, obviously not the same story whatsoever, but Paper Girls, Goonies, stuff like that, where you have a bunch of kids trying to outwit something that's bigger than them. Now. I got a couple questions, just obviously, <laughs> I took notes during it. All right, so <laughs> obviously, um, this film, very close to the culture. It's got, you know, I mean, Inuits, but a lot of people are unaware of, you know, the culture and stuff like that. Um, I have to ask, was that a remix or an updated version of throat singing? In the beginning, like when the actual would pick up, you'd get that throat singing. Am I right in that or was I totally overlooked? Yeah. No, you're right. And and so that's this amazing musician, Tanya Tagak, and she does, um, and, and so she had worked with the this DJ group, electronic indigenous DJ group, a tribe called Red. They actually now go by the name Hallucination. They're incredible. And they do really cool, like electronic dance music that in, that is, that incorporates powwow drumming and and beats and all of that sort of thing it's so it's really amazing what they do and so they had done this this track with Tanya which was amazing and her throat singing um and then they also came in and did the did the score for the movie um alongside Michael Brooks and um Tanya the throat singer she gave us hours and hours of, of vocalizations that she had um, to play around with because um, whenever then the, and then went the guys that created the music whenever you kind of see um, whenever there's going to be an alien attack or something they actually took her vocals and played them backwards and it kind of is throat singing but in this really kind of crazy mart like all mumbled up way and it, it actually works really well so it was really fun to kind of incorporate some of that stuff into the into the music and score. It was I got yeah it added a whole new depth because uh, as it started picking up pace, I, it almost felt like that's how you wanted your heartbeat to go with, and then start getting faster and faster <laughs> and faster. So it built up to your you know climactic scenes or something like that. Now yeah. your inspiration behind the film what what was the origin? Where was this? scratch film whether it be other films that gave you and I um you know childhood things different projects when you were a child yeah I definitely fell in love with movies first as a fan um and have kind of been a, a movie nerd my whole life <laughs> uh loved love horror and genre and when I um when I was making this movie, it was so great to be working with these young teenagers because it really made me think about when I was that age and just figuring out who I was and um, and you know where my indigeneity fit into that. And for me, movies and and scary movies were just a big part of how I was figuring myself out. Um, and so to be able to um, make something that felt like one of the movies I grew up watching. Uh, I loved Spielberg, Goonies, E.T., Indiana Jones, and um, and then the idea of doing something that felt kind of familiar, but in this place that was also really special and familiar to me um, was, uh, was just a, 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 a special, a, a special treat. And, and I mean, I, and now that I, um, of course, if made a movie, I realized just how crazy and ambitious of a project it was for a first feature. But it was also, you know, we we were all learning a million lessons a day, and um, and I think that myself and the cast were all just, you know, hoping to take whatever lessons that we've we've learned and and just try and get better. Yeah, it absolutely had a Goonies feel to it. Um, 
like I said, uh, the term ragtag bunch sort of fits right <laughs> here. The um, everyone represents something different, the camaraderie, the almost like inside jokes with them. I, I It brought you in and now all of a sudden it felt like you were part of it. So I gotta say, I really appreciated that. Um, so you said you're a huge fan of, you know, horror movies, it, likewise, uh, big movie nerd. I have to ask, did the exorcist play anything into those spider walks that happened? Because every time that would happen, I would get that just the scene of her going down the stairs. Oh, that's so interesting. And yeah, um, Troy James, who's this incredible contortionist, he can do the craziest things with his body. And one of the very first videos of him that I saw online, he um, can flip himself backwards and walk upside down and and it, the way he moves he can actually be like jump on to to surfaces like he can he, he's really mobile in that position it's totally crazy um and so when you know we knew that we had to be figuring out a way to make these creatures move like they were filled with tentacles and so to try and figure out what that movement would look like getting to work with Troy and just experiment with different types of walks and then there are scenes where there's multiple um, creatures in skin suits and so it was like how we, we um, had this other um, stunt person Ophelio who he would do more of the stunt heavy stuff and he would also learn from Troy some of the movements. And so if there were needed to be two people at, at, at once that they could both be um, ha having similar motions, but really with, with a lot of the, a lot of the work it came from Troy um, and, and his ability to move like that. And I mean, when, once you see it and, and, it, uh, and if you're familiar with the exorcist, then for, it's just this great little, like, oh gosh, how can, it's, it's so, it's such a, because it's, I mean, it's just not the way humans are supposed to move. And it's just, I, I think, um, I think a lot about like, I, I hate uh, moths in particular because of the, the sporadic nature of their movement. Obviously there's nothing ter terrifying about moths, but it's the movement that makes it scary. Um, and so it's like, how can you create that um, kind of strange, uh, unhuman, sporadic body language? Um, and you need someone like Troy, it turns out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, he did the spider walk. He was doing all that, the stumbling back and forth. Like you said, trying to find its feet is something that... I appreciated yeah. that. Plus the, um, there was the chase scene and the pace that went with it. Uh, I can't remember the character in which the monster took over, but had the brown curly hair and just yeah. kind of going like this. So, and obviously you're not copying these. I took them as homages to it. I'm sitting there and I'm like, it reminded me of Leatherface with the, the, the hair, the everything. And I was sitting there going, all it's missing is a chainsaw because she's just out of reach the entire time and your heart starts pounding. Yeah. But as a movie nerd, you obviously know that like <laughs> there's that thing ingrained in you like he's going to get you. Yeah. You're going to end up in the and, back And the he's car. walking around in the daytime too. Right. Uh, so. Yeah, de definitely. It was, um, it was, it was so cool to kind of, um, and I also grew up loving like Ed Gein who inspired, you know, the psycho character and so just this I I loved like getting to work with these these um amazing practical effects people on the creation of these creatures was so much fun um yeah that was a really uh, and and um I it, with this movie I mean I don't think I'm going to do this with everything but it was because <laughs> this was a kids movie with and the kids themselves love movies it's like I feel like drawing from those kinds of inspirations was, was, um, was a little, was fun and, and um, uh, definitely for, for me. Um, yeah, there were just lots of different, I, I mean, even for the, the chase up the stairs with Uki climbing out a window and into a boat. Um, I grew up on the Scream movies. Um, oh. And that is, uh, that is a Sydney Prescott move. <laughs> <laughs> or trying and, to fit underneath <laughs> that hole behind the wall, you know? Now you got these four girls and obviously co-write and stuff like that. Which one of these girls is you or which aspect of these girls is from your heart? Which one did you write with you in mind? Um, that's really funny. I, um, yeah, people have come and asked me, Oh, are you Micah? And it's like, you know, I, I think that definitely there was inspiration in, in each of the characters. We also worked a lot with the actors that 
acted in the movie. We, we shot first a proof of concept, um, but it was definitely for me drawing from my inspiration as a teenager, being Inuk and um, figuring out where my indigeneity fit into all of that. Um, that was, um, and then th this layer of shame that you have and processing that shame, um, working with the teenage actors, it was really clear that there were layers of shame that existed even, and that it came up in their language in the way they talked about their Enochness. And it, we would have co long conversations about it. What does this mean when you say, oh, that's so Enoch and you're meaning it in a negative way. And, um, and then how can we be moving towards uh, prideful language when we're talking about where we come from and who we are? Um, and so in that, I mean, definitely I've, I've had to process a, a lot of that myself. And it's, it was kind of a healing um, thing for me to be working with these young people at this stage of their lives and, and having these conversations together. Um, and then we, and realizing, um, Ryan Cabin, my co-writer and I, and this, um, they, 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 it was a lot like therapy sessions sometimes with myself and Ryan like, talking about, about a lot of this stuff. Um, and, uh, but for, for us, we knew that at, at one point at the, the girls, they had to, um, have this realization that their town was worth fighting for and that, you know, they were uniquely capable of taking on the challenge. Um, and so it was um, definitely there was there was inspiration for me and some of the characters. Um, uh, Tassiana is the sweetest per who plays Micah is the sweetest person on the planet. She's not. And um, and so she, in a lot of ways, is not like her character. And when she talks about how about Micah's anger and her temper, I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I'm more like her, <laughs> more like this character than I thought. Um, and so it's, it, you know, it is really interesting. And then, um, and then of course, with Jesse and her love of movies. And so it, I, there is definitely bits of me in, in, in each of the characters, but then a lot of, a, a lot of these things come also from these great, great kids, Alexis and Chelsea, um, were involved in, in, um, would be hanging out with Ryan and I, as we were writing, we'd go out to cabins together. We'd watch movies and go boating and, um, and, and they'd talk about, you know, talk about boys, <laughs> to be honest, talk a lot about boys and the drama that's going on. And so all of these kinds of things helped influence the dynamic of the friendships and, and the, the characters. Well, I gotta say it was a fun movie. Definitely something I feel that could uh, be one of those um, cult hits that kids from years from now will be able to look back and kind of have that feeling. No longer will they be talking about Goonies. We'll talk about Slashback, and who knows? Maybe Same. you'll you'll be up there with the indie horror scene and maybe make it all mainstream. And then all of a sudden, I'd be able to say I knew her back when. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for this movie. And uh, what's next for you? Uh, Ryan and I have another script that we're hoping to shoot next uh, year. So that we've also got a couple of other things we're developing. So um, still kind of monsters and, and scary things uh, for the most part. The, the best kind. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> Nyla. I, I wish you all the success with this movie. It was fantastic. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. And there you go. Again. That was Nyla. She was awesome. Big fan. The movie Slashback, have to say, pretty good. That is streaming right now. So until next time, this is Bob with Cinefellas. Peace.